What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. Me or Amy. And today on The Great Debaters, getting into some Black Moon classic material. All right, Amir, so we're back here on The Great Debaters. As always, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews, episodes of The Great Debaters, and commentaries on the 1st and 15th and elsewhere on the channel. So please hit that subscribe button. Like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. We appreciate your support. And right next to that, as you see, is the join button. That's how you become a member to Unique Access Entertainment. So please do that if you haven't already. And lastly, you can get your shirt for Unique Access Entertainment for courtesy of the good people at slangsmith.com. So please do all those things to help support Unique Access and help keep us growing. Now today, Amir, getting into one of the best albums in 1993, landmark album help as they say shift the culture in my opinion in many ways and it's so underrated for the people that don't know and for the people that do know it's one of their favorite albums of all time as it should be so amir black moon entered the stage in 1993 how do you remember getting into this project and i remember listening to this because uh it was like as i say in multiple videos for those who've been subscribed and watching the videos thanks again but um Man, it was just on a lot of those lists back when I was first getting into hip hop and seeing this cover on like uh, all those Amazon lists, like <laughs> people rating like their top 50 hip hop albums or their top albums of the 90s or whatever they, they titled their playlist. Um, I saw this album there a lot and this cover a lot. And I had never heard of Black Moon prior to that. I mean, I was really young. So um, I eventually had bought it shortly after and man I was uh it's one of those things where you just buy and you don't know what you're what to expect you just kind of like buy it and that's what happened and um basically getting into one of my picks is one of the singles also one of the um videos that I'd first seen for this and that would be who got the props uh which I also have the tape here which you can't even tell because they didn't promote it there but you have it on the spine and wow who got the props i mean first when i heard this beat i was i was like i didn't really know i honestly still can't really describe it but it's just so so good i think it's as a single it works i mean for the type of sound that they put on this album it's definitely one of the tracks that i would pick for a single and for this to be like their first recorded uh track as well or their first recorded or single that they put out is also just wild to me because this came out in 92 well before the album so i thought that was also interesting like if i heard this this is the first taste i heard of black moon and i was gonna sign them or whatever like what would i be thinking right and i think that this was just excellent 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 song i think the beat is just something else right it's and then, fantastic. It is great, right? So that's another thing, too. Like, I try and put myself, like, in the mind of someone from 1992 or 1993 who'd heard this first. And it's like, what were they thinking when they first heard this? Because this is also, um, you know, like Soren was saying, it kind of ushered in uh, a new part of hip-hop that was very influential or whatever. I mean, this is even before, like, Enter the Wu-Tang had actually came out granted yeah. they came out same year and you'd heard singles and what and, and whatever but i mean black moon duck down or sorry black moon you get smith and wesson later you get health skills later you get these groups later and it's just very 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 interesting so for them to kind of start off with this was just so good and i also really like the chorus a lot who got the prop who got the prop it's just super catchy the chorus is awesome. The verses are dope. Buckshot kills it as well. And, uh, yeah, this has to be one of my picks. Who Got the Props, not surprisingly, is one of my picks, too. And like Amir was saying, I remember when I first heard this song and then saw the video, hmm. at least to me, this is when I remember the ushering in of Backpack. And <laughs> that's ironic, given that uh, their stuff became so grimy. <clears throat> Very, almost immediately after this and sonically the rest of enter the stage doesn't really sound to me like who got the props yeah. the, who got the props much smoother uh sonically not as harsh or as gritty or dusty or dirty as the rest of enter the stage but to me it's one of my favorite if not my favorite black moon songs but it's just it's so 
distinctive sonically from the rest of Energy Stage and really the rest of what uh, Black Moon and the collective of later to be Chris and Duck Down would be. So that for one really stood out. And then I just liked the, you know, kind of this self assuredness Buckshot's the one that gets the job done. It's yeah. like there was this energy and this positivity of like, oh, we're getting stuff done, we're making it happen. And I love the scratching on it, of course, because there's that. So good, so and I just like the feel and the energy of who got the props, I think, is basically unmatched on Enter the Stage because it's just a different vibe, especially sonically and to a large degree lyrically because it's a lot. The rest of the album is a lot rougher uh, on every level. But yeah, yeah. I appreciated it. And... Like Amir was saying, it came out in 92, so it was a long time before Enter the Stage. So I kind of, not knowing exactly what was going on, this is pre, you know, all of us having the internet and social media and all this stuff. So I kind of, I knew a little bit from reading the source and other outlets that they were working on what would become Enter the Stage, but I didn't understand why there was such this dramatic gap between the album and or between who got the props and then the album coming out. So I'm glad we did get Enter the Stage because it's a phenomenal piece of work. So that's yeah. our first pick. Amir, what's your second pick from Enter the Stage? Yeah, and to uh, to check too, I just remembered that the cassette single also does have an extra track on it, F It Up. So that was also on the single. Who knows why they didn't add it to the album, whatever, but... That's another track that it's like, you know, check your singles if you have them. And if you're watching, that's another perk of watching this channel. So we always put you on to other stuff. But anyways, track two, or pick two, I should say, is going to be another single. And that's going to be the the vinyl behind me and the tape in my hand. That's Buck em Down. Buck em um, Down. Buck em Down <laughs> is a really, really, really good song. I love the bass line in the song. It is excellent. I love the sample. And interestingly enough we've heard this or we hear this sample later because we heard it on like organized confusion stray bullet and we also heard it with tupac's definition of a thug brother um and i don't remember which one came first between those because that was also on the poetic justice soundtrack but i think the that soundtrack came out in what 93 um I, i'm not certain but anyways you get three songs within like a couple year span using the same sample, all different vibes and different ways of executing that sample, so I find that interesting. I think the way that Black Moon does it is excellent. Uh, wow, I'm loving, loving, loving this. And also, I love the chorus on, on this, because it always confused me, like, are they saying Bucktown, or are they saying Buck'em Down? Like, I couldn't really totally tell. It's like, if you, if you say it one way, it sounds that way. If you say it the other way, it sounds that way, so that always tripped me out. But this is also another time where i was kind of thinking like well we have the group black moon but all i hear is buckshot so i was wondering where's five five foot five ft where's he at um so that kind of tripped me out i remember when i was listening to this because um he's not on my first pick and he's not on this pick um and he's actually not on my last pick either <laughs> but that always i remember tripped me out uh, I mean, the Beat Miners production is just really, really, really great on this album and also just a lot of uh, boot camp clicks material in general. But man, so Buck em Down, big, big, big time uh, banger for me. Buckshot kills it. The beat's awesome. I really like the bass line a lot. This is one that I like to bump loud. And uh, we got a remix on here and we also got Murder MCs on here too so it's just like check your stuff out man but uh, that's my second pick excellent song yeah the singles are key as Amir and I talk about on a regular basis that you get these other songs that don't make the albums for whatever reason and some of them of course end up later on compilations or different things but if like me at least when we're going through this stuff at real time and you're like oh man the only way to get these songs i gotta buy the buck em down single or i gotta buy the who got the props single it's a bit of a challenge but you got to keep up but buck em down is also my second pick this song i just love it like amir said uh the chorus to me buckshot shines on it as he does throughout enter the stage so lyrically I think it's great, but to me, it's really the chorus, the energy, and then the production is just stellar. 
<clears throat> the energy of this um and like Amir was saying with the bass line in particular this is my favorite bass line on the album and I think when the bass line can work in concert or even drive the song even more than the percussion I think in rap especially because that happens but it's also more rare than standard like it is with Buck'em Down I think that that adds an extra dimension to the song and you get a different vibe of the song because we're so used to the percussion driving the music by and large with rap and driving the song, but with Buck'em Down, at least for me, it was always more the bass line and the mm, you know, and I, that, that just always excited me because sonically it was something different, a different type of style, a different type of adventure. So for me, it was great stuff and juxtaposed against uh, who got the props? Buck him down. Obviously, he's much more confrontational, oh, much yeah. more street, much more hardcore, rugged and raw. And for that reason, I appreciated it too because it showed Buckshot's uh, diversity of what he was able to do lyrically, stylistically, all this different stuff. So, Buck him down is my second pick. Amir, what's your third pick? Yeah, and um, it's also funny you mention that because Buck em Down is the track directly after Who Got the Props. So you get two very different sounding um, tracks, but they're both so excellent and different. And my last track is also going to be another single. Uh, it's going to be I Gotcha Open right here. Now, there are different versions of this too. Like we have the music video and we have the, the remix. So uh, I'm picking the one that's on the album. But I also really like the other one, too. And um, just really, really, really good songs. I mean, that that beat is also just another just... Man, it's like... It's it's one of those beats that I associate with New York. Um, it's just one of those just... Kind of kind of rough. Little... Very street. It's just... Buckshot just is so excellent on it uh, from a rapping perspective. I mean, Eminem even rapped on this... Uh, like in the 2010s called Don't Front and that Eminem was clearly inspired obviously and he went in on that too and just the fact that the reason why I say that is because you had a rapper making a song off this 20 plus years later and it's like it still sounded so good and this is kind of like the timeless music and then also I find it interesting like the spelling on here, I got Cha open, and open is O-P-I-N, I find interesting. And another thing, too, that I think is very important to note with, like, this album and a lot of albums that we kind of forget is that a lot of these artists are really young when they're making this music. I mean, Buckshot himself was, what, 17, 18, 19, like, during these, maybe, I don't even know if he was 19, but he was really young making this music that us, I mean, I'm 30 now, Sorns, uh, in his 40s, so we still like this and, and we're still listening to people who are like 20, 18, 19, yeah. 25, whatever. And it's timeless music and it's just crazy to me. I Got You Open is is magnificent. And also, I wanted to shout this out because I never hear anyone talk about it. I really like the Black Moon logo a lot. I think it's it's actually a pretty underrated logo. <laughs> um, it's definitely a good one. It's a good one for sure. So that's my last pick. You can really... Oh, I just want to mention one thing. Um... I really wanted to get um, Brothers Talk Shit on here, but I, I couldn't. Uh, there's just, this album is so good. Just listen to it front to back and peep the B-sides and peep the tracks that could have made the album that were recorded because you could have had, like, a double album and it still would have been fire. It's great. Yeah. I mean, the album is so good, of course. The Far and I did enter the stage for best albums. There's the link. And like Amir said, top to bottom, it's just so good. But... That being said, I Got You Open is not my third pick. Mm -hmm. My third pick is one of the other singles, How Many MCs. Now, part of the reason why I like this song so much is that it uses the My Philosophy mm. uh, lyric from KRS-One for Boogie Down Productions for the chorus and how they use it. And then the beat is just so good. Uh, Granddaddy IU had used this beat before, and anytime anybody uses it, uh, I just, or the sample, I should say, of course. But I just like the way that Black Moon used it. I like the, the forcefulness of it. And for me, because so much of Enter the Stage is so uh, hardcore, street, gangster, whatever you want to call it, 
to me, some of the differentiation of it really comes down to the production. So for Enter the Stage in particular, and my three picks, they all happen to be singles. And I think it's because the production is a little bit more uh, bright, but it's also a little bit more energetic in a lot of ways, whereas the other stuff is a little more, I'd say, not that. So anyway, that's why and how I got my three picks because there's not a bad song on this album. You know, you get the Mob Deep appearances, you get the Smith mm. & Wesson appearances. You get all these great things throughout Enter the Stage that make it a phenomenal album and one of the best of 1993, of course. And it just helped usher in this, quote-unquote, underground renaissance of what was going on in New York that we get around the same time as Wu-Tang. And we just saw the forcefulness of it, and it was just phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. So... Those are my three picks. Anything else you want to add, Amir? Nope. It's great out, man. Don't sleep on it and peep out those extra tracks, all I got to say. Yeah, the extra tracks definitely help uh, supplement the album, especially if so you're, good. like Amir and me, if you're so into Black Moon from this era, getting finding those extra tracks, especially if, you either, if you've ever never heard them or if you haven't heard them in a while, just hearing them again just gives you like a little extra bonus and boost from Enter the Stage. So I highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, those are my three picks. You guys got Amir's three picks. Hit us up in the comment section down there. Let us know what you think your top three picks are on Black Moon's Enter the Stage. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Please join Unique Access. Please pick up your shirt via slangsmith.com. I'm Soren Baker. Amir Amy. Great debater, y'all. Thank you, Black Moon, for this. In the beginning, hip-hop was ruled by the East Coast. Then the West Coast rose to prominence, thanks to gangster rap. Hip-hop changed the world. Gangster rap changed the narrative. And then changed the world again. The history of gangster rap features unheard stories, unseen photos and documents, all with exclusive interviews from the founders and players who shaped gangster rap. I think a real gangster rapper has to scare you a little bit. The history of gangster rap written by veteran rap journalist Soren Baker. In stores now. Yo, what up? This is DJ Quick. Be sure to pick up my homeboy Soren Baker's book, The History of Gangster Rap, if you really want to know what we do.